All right. Hi everyone and welcome to a new video here on Crafty Cassie. I'm Cassie, your host, and today this is a new Whip It podcast. This is season two, episode three. If you want to check out my past videos to see what I've been up to, there's been some breaks, there's been some gaps. If you watch all of them through, uh, which I don't necessarily recommend because some of them early ones I wasn't really doing as a podcast, they were just kind of like show and tells, if you will. Uh, but yeah, so if you are a new subscriber, welcome. Thank you for joining the family. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the craziness that is my podcast and my world. So as I kind of stated in my last podcast, kind of, I don't know if I explained it very well, this podcast is mostly a fiber-based podcast, so there will be lots of knitting, crochet, spinning, fiber, things of that nature podcast. But I'm kind of also a jack-of-all-trades, and I do more than just spinning, and just knitting, and just crochet, and just fiber stuff. I also do resin. I also do kinzashi with a ribbon. I do sewing. I do uh, not a whole lot of art. I do do some journaling. Not the best. I try really hard. It is what it is. I also dye yarn. I have a small little shop called uh, Crafty Cassie on Store Envy. If you'd like to support the podcast and, you know, content and stuff like that, go ahead and check it out. See if something is there that you'd like and purchase. Um, I do miniature dollhouse. That's a new video up. Um, you can see the first step in my Lisa's Taylor build. Um, I am not actively working on it right now. I am in the process of packing. I am moving to Biloxi for the next eight months for school. And so I'm kind of in a mixture of finishing whips and starting new stuff because there's so much out there I want to do, especially with Corona going on. Um, I am trying to stay entertained as best I can. Um, so that's a mixture of being on Ravelry and packing and knitting and packing and packing and more packing. Um, I'm kind of packing the stuff up that my movers won't take. Um, so anything that is flammable, anything that is liquid, um, anything that is hazardous. So a lot of my, uh, all of my dye stuff is going with me, all of my makeup, all of my nail polish, some of my crafting stuff, not a lot, um, all of my, uh, good yarn uh my expensive yarn so like all my hand dyed stuff is coming with me um immediately everything else will be moved down to mississippi at a later date right now um everything is kind of shut down because of the corona <laughs> the corona has now become a thing um it's a noun i mean it always was a noun but now it's like out there noun um the corona it has hit and uh, my movers are on lockdown until May. So, and I'm not the only person in my company who is moving. So, who all of us are that are in transit to our next workspace, um, if they haven't already picked up our stuff, they will pick up in May if our stuff has already been picked up. I know some people were trying to get their stuff back uh, because they got stuck where they're at. I have not. I am going to continue down to Biloxi as normal. Um, so I'm packing my car up. And it's about a third full right now. And I still have a lot more stuff to pack. So, with that stated, um, I thought I would do a podcast before I get to Biloxi because... A, my husband's working today, so my husband works a day, doesn't work a day, works a day, doesn't work a day. We've got some sick babies. I am also trying 
to do vlogs. And I need to get that material, all those videos, off of my um, phone. Something I've not ever done before, so this is fun. And with that said, I am hoping to get this podcast edited. It has been quite a few weeks, and by quite a few, I mean like maybe a month um, since my last podcast. I do try to post every Monday. Um, the podcast, the Whippet podcast, does go up on Wednesdays, so this does not get into um, into my Monday stuff. This is an extra bonus video. But in this video, I'm hoping to accumulate all of my crafting because I am a jack of all trades. So, but this will be mostly knitting heavy. So I'm hoping to get this edited today while my husband's at work. Which means that most of this day is not going to have any packing. I just have to get the boxes that we packed last night into the car so he thinks I did something productive. That's the idea. <laughs> With that said, uh, I have a finished project that I've thrown away because it was a resin piece, it was a resin ring, and it did not turn out the way I wanted, and I hated it. So I was like, goodbye. Uh, probably should have saved that because my babies could have used it later on as a play piece. Not right now, obviously, they're only 10 months old. But hindsight is greater than foresight, so that is neither here nor there. Uh, let's go ahead and get into finished objects now that this intro has been as long as it is. Uh, I have no idea how long I've been recording, but I've got a single bar, and I want to try and get through everything. So, finished objects. First one, up right here. It's kind of staying on my sock blocker. It's a pair of socks for moi. Um, I don't remember what yarn this was because my babies spilt water all over the label and my husband tossed it. Yeah. So, this is 56 stitches on a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle, I think. If I'm wrong, definitely correct me. Um, it is just a vanilla sock. I know I got the yarn from Hobby Lobby. This is a woolless yarn. I just don't remember the brand or the color. I do not have Corona, by the way. I have the sniffles. I've got a little head cold, some congestion. So, um, just, so if you hear me sniffling, that's what it is. It's not Corona, I promise. Even if it was, yeah, I couldn't give it to you through the camera. You're safe at home. So, um, then I did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset heel. Uh, 15 row, one by one ribbing for the cuff. Um, and then the leg I knit for six inches. And then the, the foot is just a regular rounded toe foot. The next item I'm going to show you, I'm only going to show you the backs because this is going to be a new knit design. So these are finished, and this is using Manos de Uruguay in their sock, their Allegro base, which is an 8515, I believe, and I forget the color. Is it gemstones? I'm not sure. Again, knit 56 stitches and on a US 1, 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, when I get the pattern written up and published, I will put, or not published, written up, I will put a call out for test knitters because that will be coming soon. Um, but I gotta get it written up first. So that's something I'm doing in the evenings as much as I can. But those are finished. Ends are woven in. I have not blocked them yet. I am going to block them for the sake of photos, though. So, yeah. I also have two completely finished dishcloths. I have quite a few more dishcloths that are finished. Um, I have four more, except for I already gifted them to uh, 
my daughter's godfather. He's our uh, friend of ours. And those were on Trigger and Cream. I forget the colorway's name. It's on a cone. Got a big old one of them. And this is the Granny. Granny, uh, my, my Granny's favorite washcloth or something to that effect. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Uh, I did this without the yarn overs, so. And I did it on a US 10, so whatever that millimeter stitch is. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but I've got these two to add to my daughter's washcloth collection. They have a handful already, and actually I might just give these to my husband to use as dishcloths. So, that's two done, and I'm so excited to get those out of my craft room as finished objects. Um, yeah, so... I'm going to add both pairs of my socks to my sock box, just so I can see how many socks I'm knitting this year. I think I knit like eight pairs last year. Uh, Kristen of Roll and Vine uh, podcast and Roll and Vine Yarns is no longer doing the box of socks cow, but I kind of like having all my socks in the one place for the year, just so that I can see how many socks I'm knitting. I have a ton of sock yarn. And a lot of single sock yarn, single skein sock yarn to make socks, as well as design sock patterns. So, um, that's what I am trying to do to keep myself kind of, not necessarily accountable, but um, organized. That's a good one. I'm trying to be a little bit more organized. Um, part of that organizi organizing means that I am pulling stuff from the graveyard aka my whip box and resurrecting new life into it which you will see in my whips um, which I'm about to move into but for every new object that I cast on I once the new object is finished then I need to work on a whip something that has been in my on the needles for a really long time I don't believe in frogging things but I do have one whip that I'm probably going to frog uh, and cast on something else, probably a cardigan. I am eyeballing the campsite or fireside cardigan, and it has a bunch of um, yarn overs that start really scattered up top uh, and then get more dense as you get further down the cardigan. It looks super cozy, and the yarn I'm using is just a real basic acrylic and would be great as an overthrow, and I don't have anything in that color. My mother-in-law may also try to steal it from me because it is lime green. So yeah. Oh, hiccups. Hiccups, hiccups, hiccups. Yeah, it sucks. Alright, so we're going to go into whips. Um, because I have so many whips. And I want to start with the yarn ones, and then I'm going to move into a dollhouse one for Lisa's Taylor. And I will sh give you a little spiel about it um, and go from there. So this is a whip only because it hasn't been blocked and had the ends sewn in uh, but they're pretty much an FO. So I have this shawl right here. Is that the back? Nope, this is the front. It's this one here as you can see, and it's got a yarn over garter panel, a yarn over, uh, not garter, but, um, I can't think of what it is called. Oh goodness, the, what the stitch is called, but there's knitting the knit stitch is all on the one side, so it makes a nice panel there. And then it has this very interesting edging here. This needs to be blocked so bad, um, and I can't wait to really open it up. Uh, this is knit with my own hand-dyed yarn. This is Funny Face on my Dragon Base. 
Uh, my Dragon Base is a 75-25 um, Merino Nylon Blend. It is super soft and squishy. Um, all of my bases have a mythical are named after mythological creatures. Uh, so, and Funny Face was one of my favorite movies that I used to watch with my grandmother. So that's why I named it. And it always made me so happy. And I would always blush so much at some of the stuff because it was kind of cringy. Uh, listening to Audrey Hepburn sing. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. Um, you heard talk whisper singing that she's trying to do. Um, but it is what it is. And this reminded me of how pink I used to get while watching that movie with my grandmother. Now then, I have wanted to expand my photos on my store envy site. Um, and one thing, I follow the yarn of a truck and they were doing swatches with the new yarn. And I really, really liked that. So I have my knit swatch here. So you can really see the variegation. It is a tonal and not a semi-solid because there's just too much range in the color. I have not one, but two crochet swatches. And the reason being is because I was in the middle of wrapping my nail polish and I was condensing some bottles because I noticed one was almost dead or empty. And in the process of doing that, I spilt nail polish on this swatch. And if I ever want to take these to shows, and I can't take photos with these, obviously, because they're ruined. So this is going to go in the trash, unfortunately. Um, and this one will get blocked. And we'll have a, you know, all of these will be, I'm hoping to have these on a ring. So you can kind of just flip through them and be like, oh, I really like this color. And you can see that it is crocheted. This is my crochet swatch. So I've got single crochet down here, half double, double, and triple crochet. So you can see how it looks in the different stitches um, overall. And then it is topped off with a single crochet just to kind of finish it off and um, give that triple crochet a little bit more shape because it really, for some odd reason, triple crochet really blooms compared to single crochet. So there's that. And then I have this guy. And this is a crochet granny square. So you can really see the differences in the variegation in that colorway. Um, so if you were looking to use this in a crochet granny uh, striped blanket, you can get an idea of what it will look like all grannied up. And even after crochet uh, knitting, the shawl, which by the way is from the Shawl Society by Helen Stewart on Ravelry. It is her Shawl Society number four. That is the first one, the Sea Glam Shawl. And I knit that not just with my own yarn, but with a US 4 needle. I got gauge. Um, I talked about that in my last podcast. I don't remember the millimeters on the US 4, so Google. Um, and so now it just all needs to be blocked. Um, but yeah, I still have quite a bit left from all of that. So that'll probably go in the bag for baby socks. So that's fun. The next whip I have is being risen from the graveyard. I haven't fully finished working up to it at this point, but I have made some substantial work on it. So yeah, this is the, the beginning. So this is the bottom. This was my first square that I knit out of projects, and I've been working on this since 2016 for sure. So I have finally gotten uh, two, three, and four squares all knit together. So I officially have the beginning of a blanket and the ends are all sewn in. 
yes I have another square with the alright so the last bit of the yarn that I'm using is the border and to crochet it all together so yeah it's the last bit of that sorry for all the technical difficulties that I am having uh, but yeah then there is this fifth square that will be added soon and uh, that needs to be crocheted into that stripe at the end and then I have two squares finished so I am using nine blocks and then edging it in this which is Knit Picks palette in the dough color and it's just kind of a neutral brown tone kind of a the color of a doe a deer a female deer Ray a drop of golden sun <laughs> sorry I couldn't help myself um, sorry for the horrible singing congestion and my voice is I don't sing very much anymore so my voice is kind of out of tune but yeah I have these two squares that I need to edge these were all from finished projects or uh, sample dyeing, test dyeing, um, more test dyeing, more projects, socks, a lot of socks. That's from a shawl that I knit my mother-in-law. And then these two, which are my newest, my tiniest square from my shawl and these socks that I've knit, as well as this guy here from that first pair of socks that I showed you. So those are my three newest squares. This has been finally finished and had the end sewn in. I've also knit the border on this guy, so that's going to get added soon. These two will get borders and their end sewn in, which means these can then be added to the blanket. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to knit this as wide as my bed so that we can have this either be a really nice, comfy, shareable blanket for on the couch or to add as an extra layer uh, in the wintertime. We are moving to California at the end of this year for the foreseeable future. So I don't know how much I'll need it there, but I do hear it gets cold for like two weeks. So kind of like when I lived in Florida. So that'll be fun. Uh, we also plan on keeping the house probably a little bit on the cooler, warmer side. Warmer for here. Uh, but cooler for there because it does get kind of hot. We're going to be moving to San Diego. So it's pretty mild there because we're going to be right, you know, fairly close to the water. So that's, that's fun. But yeah, so two new squares um, with that. So that is a whip that has been resurrected. I have another whip that has been resurrected as well. Let me put this all back together. Put that aside. And it is living in my Nyai cat bag. This is also from like 2016. Maybe only 2017, no 16, because I remember buying the yarn then. Um, so here's the yarn. Yes, it is obnoxiously bright orange. And it is very much an orange. Uh, this is Madeline Tosh, Tosh, Tosh Merino Twist. So it is their, I have a label. I saved a label because there is a pocket in this bag. Ah, Twist Light in, say, 7525 Merino Nylon Mix. There's 420 yards, 384 meters, and this is in the colorway Aries. So, for those of you who don't know, I love mythology, and I tried really hard to buy, so I just wanted to get both. Or, of all of the, um, not mythology, astrology. I do love mythology, too, but I love astrology as well. So I have a sweater's quantity of Aries and a sweater's quantity of Pisces. And that's it. And then I have a few single skeins of other colors, and I wish I had gotten the Leo color. Unfortunately, it is also orange. It's a deeper orange, kind of bordering, um, kind of rust color. Kind of. Not really. Uh, but I'd only gotten that in the Merino Light, which is a single-ply yarn. So... 
while that won't necessarily look good as will be great for a sweater because I obviously only have one it'd be good for color work but I don't know how to do color work yet that is something I wish to try this year um, so I just I fell off the bandwagon because I ended up overseas working so let's start with this the object that I'm actually knitting and this is my tin can knits flax light sweater and I am doing the garter panel here on the sleeve. It is a raglan shaped fingering weight yarn uh, sweater. And I have knit all the way down to the separation for the arm sleeves plus about an inch beyond just to kind of anchor that in. And then I have picked up for the sleeves because the sleeves can be the hardest part um, for anybody. Um, case in point, I have another one of these, but I'm doing it in a sport weight. And I'm doing that in the smallest size. I'm doing this in the medium size for the Flax Light, which is a 38 inch bust. I'm about a 36, 37, around the broadest portion of my bust. Um, my band is actually a 27 inch, so there's almost a almost 10 inch difference between my, you know, right across the bustier part of my bust and my, um, where my underwire would sit, or my band of my bra would sit. So I went with the bigger one because I didn't want this to be skin tight on me. I wanted some looseness and I went up to a th uh, 38 inch size, which is the medium. I like that there's in between sizes too. So like my husband, who is like, the same, I think he's actually a 38 at his broadest point of his chest point as well, solid, but I think I'm going to do the medium large for him and just knit the arms and the, and the body longer because he's actually super freaking long. He's tall, he's six feet tall, but he's super skinny too. Um, so he wears like a size large clothing so that he has the length and then it just kind of hangs on him and it's really wide and kind of... Oh, well, looks like he's wearing a cape. So, um, I wanted some some positive ease. I wanted this also to be a great over throw over kind of sweater. The Pisces is a really br uh, bright pastel blue, kind of leaning towards a sky blue. So these are going to be. I don't know if I'm going to knit that in the flex light pattern. It would have been awesome if I could have gotten. Uh, enough yarn to knit a rainbow or a total astrological flax light collection. They all would have been different colors, would have been great, great staples, every color of the rainbow essentially, and then some. Um, and I just, like I said, started working overseas and didn't have internet access as often as I would have liked, so I only got the two colors. And they no longer sell these colors. Go figure. So, um, but yeah, that is my tale of woe. And this is my resurrected sweater. And I'm hoping, uh, because I'm going to mark, I have an extra stitch marker set aside, right here on the back of a button panel of buttons, a packet of buttons here, and I'm going to mark on the sweater where I left off. So you can see. And this is about two inches of sleeve, so I've got about seven inches more to go before I start the decreases for the sleeve. Um, I'm doing it magic loop rather than on DPNs, or a, uh, I think it says to use a 16 inch or a 9 inch needle and just kind of knit it in the round. I'm obviously not doing that so but it is what it is I've got stitch markers that I've made just some little like disco balls here and here why do I have this one here oh I've got a light blue crystal one here I think this one was to mark my cast uh, where I split for the sleeves is what it looks like. 
So, yeah. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that I'm going to have a big gap in my armpit. Here, unfortunately, because I did not keep my knitting tight, which you can see a little bit closer over here, seeing some gaps in those sweaters. Let's see if I can spread it open. There, you can see it better. So, while that is sad and unfortunate, um, and I even have a drop stitch right there. Awesome. Wonderful, lucky me. That is several stitches dropped. Jesus. That whole area has dropped stitches in here. So, I might just try and pick up and sew all those holes together with that string that is right across there. Uh, when I picked this up, I found that I had dropped like seven or eight stitches. I have completed so that, that all those dropped stitches was probably right there in the armpit. Yay me. Um, but anyways, I've completed my first skein of yarn. I am on my second skein. I have three more to work with, so I should have plenty of yarn, and I shouldn't have to worry about running out. I may even have quite a bit of leftover, which is fine by me. I will find another project for the leftover yarn. So that's that finished object. I've got another finished object. Oh, that's some future cast on uh, from when I finished that sweater. Um, so I need to... Oh, I've got another whip right here at arm's reach. That is a whip as well, and I want to show it to you. I have this guy right here that I am in the middle of adding a new column to. So you can see, and it's getting quite large. It's a nice little lapgan right now. I have knit up all of the yarn. This is from Seattle, a store in Seattle. This was all Madeline Tosh. This is also Madeline Tosh, but this is the singles. This is the twist. And that was from a store in Seattle I picked up in August of 2018. I remember it because we were going to Tacos and Tequila Fest, uh, which is also when I got pregnant. So, because tequila makes my family grow. I don't know why, but it does. So, um, yeah. These little colors here, these bright fluorescent colors. Um, here, even this guy. Uh, I'm not really doing a whole lot of color placement except for the fact that I'm trying, like when I buy a cluster of singles, I'm not necessarily picking for a particular color palette, um, but I do try to arrange them in that collection to go with what it is surrounding. So like I picked this fluorescent yellow because of the yellows in here. It also went well with the green below. This guy had all these blue specklings and the fluorescent green that flowed here with this blue-gray color, as well as it had all these pink specklings, and this is a red and black square here, so I used the fluorescent pink next, and um, this color has um, some of them brighter speckles, some bright pink speckles that worked well with this. Not necessarily with the red underneath it, but that's okay. And then I got had this blue here, which worked well with this color down here, which is white with some blue speckling that you can kind of see there. Now I'm in a new cluster, and I had this one singular blue color in this next cluster I have. Most of them are all pinks, which will actually look fairly well against this these colors on this column here. Um, I think I have a dark color that will actually go here. Uh, but yeah, so, but this blue also works well right here because this has got some brown and blue speckles in it as well. Um, since the last time I showed you, I think I have knit two full rows and maybe two and a bit full columns. I do have all the colorways saved up for you guys. 
if you want to know what they are, uh, I guess I can grab that bag real quick. But I feel like this podcast has already gone on for so long, and I don't necessarily want to have another hour and a half podcast. Um, so I think I'm going to probably skip that and save it for next time for when I don't have as much progress to show you guys. I'm hoping I can podcast a little bit more frequently because when I move to Biloxi, I'll be moving by myself for eight months, which will suck because my babies are going to grow so much. Their speech is going to at least double, if not triple. They say so many words now. They're almost walking. Uh, the older of the two, Addie, walks with a walker. She walks really good, like a little old lady. Uh, so for being a 10-month-old baby, she's walking excellent. And Frankie tries to use the walker, but she doesn't have enough core strength to really get the momentum. The walker just walks too, too fast for her. But she tries. She tries really hard. Um, I am also walking with Addie while holding my hands. And that was something we had to get the girls over, was holding our hands. They don't like to hold our hands for some strange reason. Um, but they don't. And uh, now they do, because they realize that they can move. And Addie can go so much further with her uh, holding my hands. So we're practicing walking. We're trying to help her build that strength and that confidence. She is standing on her own, not consistently, but has done it a few times now where she's not holding on to anything and she's just kind of like stuck. She's like, you know, when you're like standing on something that's um, unstable and you're kind of like you crouched out a little bit to kind of get your balance better and have some fluidity in your knees and such. She does that. She's just like, uh, and then she lets herself fall um, onto her butt. So it's a controlled fall. It's really cute. Um, and we've been home both times that she's done it. And I guess she's done it a couple of times at daycare now. So that's awesome to know that she is moving steadily and progressively. Um, but yeah, my phone is ringing. I'll be right back. All right, so I am back. Um, it's been about an hour. Um, my baby is home-ish. My husband just took her down to the hospital. Um, so I can focus on packing and finishing up this video. So where did I leave off? I was talking about the blanket and then I wasn't. Oh, I'm moving on to the doll room that I'm working on currently. Alright, so here's my box with the doll room that I'm currently working on so that it all stays together. And the instruction manual. And this is what it will look like when it's done, which is pretty awesome. And I have done one piece, which is this little shelf unit here which you can see a little bit better in this photo. You can see it's this unit. And this is what it looks like. So, I just need to fill it now. That's going to be in the next video is probably to fill it. That's um, in the instructions at least, is to fill all of those items in um, with what looks like some folds of fabric and some pillows as well as some boxes and baskets. So that'll be fun to work on in the next video because it is called the fabric cabinet. So um, the instructions are actually really straightforward. Um, you know, with, and it's all in very legible English, so that's nice. That was one of the things I was a little bit worried with because I did order this kit from wish.com, um, which is a, an Asian website. Um, comes out of China. And so I was kind of concerned that maybe they weren't going to have the best English instructions or everything was going to be in Chinese or Mandarin. Um, and it wasn't. It was in English. So that's great. But it didn't come in a box like some of the other kits that I've ordered from Wish did. So that was depressing. 
but everything seems to be present, so I'm not too, too worried. It's just going to always be a mystery on how are these boxes, these kits going to come. So, yeah, so that's that finished one, and um, this is also a whip. I'm continuously building up more. Obviously not right now because I'm trying to pack or focus on packing. Um, but yeah, so I have bought stuff since my last video, but it's all packed because I packed my yarn, most of it. Um, I got something for a uh, Find Your Fade shawl, I think is what it's called, or it's the one that's a feather, something feather, birds of a feather, I'm not sure um, what the shawl's called, but it's one of those massive ones that uses multiple kinds. And I'm doing it with um, some Fidalgo yarn, Fidalgo Artist yarns or something like that. It's the yarn company out of Fidalgo Island, aka Anacortes, Washington, um, which is the next town over. They are a hand-dyed yarn company. Um, everything in there is small batch and you get, I think, about six skeins. Everything's you know, uh, if you want a enough for a particular project, you have to buy basically everything that they dyed in that batch. Otherwise, they don't dye the same colorways over and over again. So that is one thing that I don't like about Fidalgo. Um, you can't get the same colorway or even relatively close every single time. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I do have this bag, which did have my uh, Sea Glam shawl in it, but my Sea Glam shawl is now finished and needs to have another project in it. So I found a shawl called the Kessie shawl, shawl, and it uses the same needle size as my Sea Glam and requires three shades of yarn, fingering weight yarn. So I have some Apple Fiber Studio yarns here from Apple Yarn up in Bellingham and uh, these don't have names. I think these were just random dyed um, like one of a kinds uh, but this is on their Macintosh so all of their bases are named after different breeds of apples. Okay so I am back. It has been some time. Uh, baby is home from school, daycare. She's currently napping and husband is at the grocery store. So I'm going to try and finish this podcast off. Um, I was talking about this beautiful color that is a tonal green. This is also uh, alpaca, merino, and nylon. Same in this guy, which is uh, some pink, black, and blue speckling on a natural base. Beautiful. And then I have this one, which is kind of a creamy, kind of gray color. And again, the same base. So I thought that these... Hold on. These three colors together would look really great together for a three color shawl. So I'm going to be doing the Kessie shawl. Um, it's on Ravelry. And I saw it on Instagram and someone had shared it. And it's just beautiful. So I, uh, I believe it was on the navy and gold and something else. And I really liked that, but really wanted to do something with these. And I think they'll be just excuse me, perfect for spring because the greens are coming back, the pinks and the flowers are coming back, and then there's still just this whisper of life coming back to everything, but it's still cool enough that you kind of need a little extra snug. So, um, I think that three color shawl is going to be great, but I have to get 
my flax light sweater off the needles first before I can cast this on, in theory. So, okay, sorry, I had a sneeze. I'll try to edit that little bit out. Um, I am in the throes of packing. I would show you some of my yarn that is in the store, but um, that's getting packed today, maybe, maybe tomorrow. Sorry for the sniffles. Um, and so if you want to see what I have available in the store, you definitely can. Starting on the 30th, I will be closing the store, not permanently, but just for the sake of the move, uh, because I will be leaving on the 4th of April, and it will reopen once I get established in Biloxi. Um, so that could be the end of the month, could be the beginning of May. So um, definitely stay tuned here for that. Um, and I am going to go pack, pack as much as I can while the baby is sleeping. So until next time, guys, I will see you later.